Hey guys, welcome back. So today, working on this 58cc chainsaw. This one is branded Craft World. And I've never heard of this brand before, so I did a quick search online and found that this is actually a common saw that's made in China and it's sold under a lot of different names. Anyway, this saw does not belong to me. Uh, someone reached out to me, said they recently purchased this saw used and it had no air filter or cover. You know, that said, he brought it home, started it, and it ran great for about two or three minutes, and he hasn't been able to start it since. Now, the person who bought this doesn't have a lot of experience with small engines, so of course the first question I asked him was, did he mix oil in the fuel? And he said he did. So I told him to drop it off, and as soon as he gave it to me, I pulled the engine over, and it does not feel like there's a lot of compression there. So I asked him again about the oil and the fuel, and he clarified that he put oil here and straight gasoline in here. So that is not a good sign because this engine, as most of you know, it has no sump, it has no oil. The fuel has to have oil in it, and it seems like he may have run it for a couple minutes without any oil so most likely this engine is dead and this saw brand new sells for only about a hundred and eighty dollars and after digging on amazon i could find them on sale for about a hundred and forty so most likely this is going to need a new top end and unless that is dirt cheap i would say this might be a tear down video anyway let's not jump to conclusions let's pull the plug out maybe get the compression tester in there see where we're at and go from there. I can tell you already it's not exactly the best design. Looks like this post is in the way from getting the spark plug out. Maybe. Looks like a new plug. Don't think it's seen any use. All right, let's check the compression. On a two stroke, you need at least 100 PSI to get it to start. You know, the higher the better, but we need I would say at least a hundred. And we are at 40. So yeah, I, I would say this engine's cooked. Let's put a little bit of oil down the cylinder. See if that makes any kind of a difference. Let's try this again. We'll do it with the throttle open this time. No change, 40 PSI. So yeah, I think that's the problem there's not enough compression. So there's a couple of things we can do to verify that the cylinder and the piston are damaged. We can pull the exhaust off and get a look at the side of the piston and cylinder. And that's probably the easiest. I could also use the boroscope. 
know, the borescope tends to make things look worse than they really are. But I say we start there. That is the easiest thing. So let's take a peek. So far, actually, not terrible. I can see some crosshatch in there. Let me switch to the side camera. That should give us a better view. And from what I can see, actually, the cylinder does not look damaged. You know, right now the piston is at the bottom of its travel. And the cylinder crosshatch, it is still there. So, yeah, maybe this engine did not cook itself. So, I say we put the spark plug back in. Maybe put a little bit of premix down there and just pull it over. See if we get any signs of life. bit of choke, turn the ignition on, and right now the throttle is locked to full open throttle. Let's see what we get. Wow. <laughs> I was not expecting that. I thought this was going to be a teardown video. And based on the 40 PSI, I gave this no chance. So maybe there is some sort of compression release because this engine, it is not dead. So let's add some fuel to the tank and try this again. Choke, ignition's on, and we'll put it back to full throttle. Maybe. Okay, let's try it again. This time, no throttle, leave the choke on. Let's try it again. I'm gonna lock the throttle open again, choke. Doesn't like running with the choke off.
really thought this was just going to be a teardown video. This saw really isn't worth putting a lot of money into fixing. And I would say this is most likely a carb issue. The saw starts when you have full throttle choke on. Can't get it to rev up at all. And if I turn the choke off, it starts to rev a little bit. And then the engine promptly dies. So I think we do have a fuel issue. And there is actually a little puddle of fuel forming under the saw. And it does not seem to be coming from the fill. So most likely there's an issue with the fuel line. Or maybe the carb is just flooding over. I'm not sure. I think either way, that carb does need to come out. So let's take some of these parts off, get better access, and get that carb out of that saw. I think I need to get that plug out first. I've never worked on one of these saws before. So far, it's not too bad to take apart. You know, some saws you get a remove the entire engine to service the carburetor. It looks like these two screws right here is all that holds the carb in and it should come right out. Now, I'm sure rebuild kits are most likely not available for this since it's a clone saw and a clone carb. I'm willing to bet a replacement is dirt cheap. So that it's most likely the route I'm going to take here. And we've got a couple fuel lines here. One on the top, one on the right. And I think that's it. There's no purge bulb on this one. And of course the linkage, then we should be free. Remove the choke. and the throttle linkage, and that is it. Pretty easy to remove. Carbs actually dry, there's no signs of flooding. And now that I'm taking a closer look, I can see the side of the case is wet where the cap is. So yeah, the cap might be missing a seal or maybe I didn't tighten it enough. Although it is quite tight. So let's just pop that off and see if there's something not right. That cap is already on there. So tight I can't get it off. So yeah, I don't think tightening it is the answer as far as stopping the leak. Nothing obviously wrong either. So I don't know if we're missing a seal, potentially. Or maybe I just need to tighten it a little bit more. So let's try the easy thing. Tighten it a little more. See if that works. Well, I think that did it. It's been about 10 minutes. 
and everything is dry. No more fuel is leaking out of that cap. So that problem is solved. And I think the carb issue too might be sorted out because I took a look on eBay. I just typed in 5,800 Chinese chainsaw and a carb that looks just like this came up. It's only $8. So I've already placed that order and we'll give it a try in a few days when it gets here. New carburetor showed up today. And I'm kind of unloading the parts cannon on this one, meaning, you know, I don't know for sure that it is the carburetor. You know, chances are it is, but there are other issues that would cause the saw to starve for fuel like it is. Here, let's just compare these real quick. Yeah, they appear to be the same. This rubber piece here just removes from the old one and should install right on there. So let's just double check the jets on the old one to see where they're at. I guess starting with the low speed. I mean, there's no saying that these jets are correct. Wow, low speed was two turns out, which is quite a bit. And same thing with the high speed. So I would not have expected that. I would think the initial setting would be closer to one to start with. Let's just see on the new carb where it shipped at. About one and three quarters. So I'm going to set the initial setting. I'm thinking one and a quarter and go from there. I'm going to do the same on the high speed. So right now we're at it was about three and a quarter turns out, which is way too much. So we'll also set that at one and a quarter. And that's an issue I find on clone carbs. A lot of times they just put these jets in during assembly just so they won't fall out. They don't actually set them to where they should be or even in the ballpark. Now, it's not to say that one and a quarter is the final setting. You know, it may not even start like that. And if it doesn't, we'll open it up a little bit, maybe a quarter turn and try starting it after each adjustment. And once it's going, then we can fine tune it. So I think... We'll just get this bolted on. We'll start with trying to move this piece over. Go something like that. It's just a dust boot. And the adjustment for the idle is right down in there. And the other interesting thing is that I noticed on the old carb, there are no gaskets whatsoever, and there's absolutely nothing. And I don't think it ever had anything, and I don't think it's meant to, uh, which seems kind of cheap. I would think a gasket would seal better than just metal on metal. There's just a metal O-ring right there, and of course the metal carb body. So that is another reason why this may not be running right. So if the new carb doesn't run it right, we'll probably try adding a gasket Maybe check the fuel flow, check the spark arrester, and just kind of start crossing things off the list. So, yeah, let's get this installed, see if that solves the issue. We'll start by getting the throttle reconnected. That's the pulse line for the pump. And the fuel supply. The choke lever, which I think went something like that. Yeah, 
Yeah, something's not right. The throttle is hanging up on something. So I'm guessing the butterfly might be hitting the intake, so we might be misaligned a little bit. Yeah, you can just see it snapped open once I loosen these bolts a little. Yeah, something's not right. So let me pause it here. I'm going to pull this off, take a closer look and see why that throttle is hanging up. The old and the new look the same as far as the size of the opening. I did double check it. They both came in at 15.9 millimeters. So I don't think it's the carb that's the issue. And the throttle plate, when the carb's uninstalled, has no issues opening and closing. So it must have been hanging up on something. Let me get this. Oh, actually, it's not the carburetor. It's the actual throttle lever itself is not, it's not moving. So the issue has nothing to do with the carburetor. Oh, there we go. That's a little concerning, but what do you expect? It's not an expensive saw. So we'll get this back to where it was and then just finish it up by putting that plastic piece on the top to kind of hold everything in. Then we'll try to start it. Okay, let's try it out. Well, I just tested it, and unfortunately the camera did not record it, but you did not miss much. It's not running any better, no matter how I adjust the jetting. So I'm thinking that low compression number is a real issue here. But I am gonna add a gasket just to make sure between the carb and the engine and we'll try it one more time you know I guess the other issues it could be include fuel flow from the tank to the car but I did test that and there is no blockage in the line or the filter so that is not the issue and you know we could have a clogged spark arrestor but I don't think that's the issue either because it won't even idle and I can kind of rev it up and then it starves out for fuel. It's getting air from somewhere, you know, so it could be compression issues. It could be a crank seal, you know, whatever it is. I'm leaning towards a problem that's most likely not worth fixing on this sock. So you can buy a brand new one pretty cheap of the same model. All right, let's try it again. Hopefully it's recording this time. 
Choke on, ignition on, leave the throttle at idle. That's pretty much all it's doing. So I've got the low speed now, two turns out. Yeah, that's, that's all it does. You know, I spent quite a bit of time on the lost footage trying to tune this carburetor. Anywhere from one turn out all the way to three turns out on the low speed jet. And there's really no noticeable difference as far as how it reacts. You know, I can kind of get the saw to rev up if I work the choke, but I can't find anywhere where it's happy to idle. You know, it's just not running right. So I'm thinking that even though the cylinder looks good, there has to be something wrong with the rings, maybe the reed valves, if it has them. Uh, there's just something not allowing the saw to run. And knowing that the prior owner did say he had it running for a couple minutes with straight gasoline, you know, I'm leaning towards maybe burned up rings. So I'm gonna get the exhaust off so we can look at the side of the piston that'll tell us more than we knew before because the boroscope only let us see the cylinder. By pulling the exhaust, we can actually see the side of the piston and the condition of the rings, at least on the exhaust side. So yeah, let's get the exhaust off and see if that tells us anything. Those are pretty loose. It's not a good sign. We got a random chunk of aluminum behind the exhaust. Now, let me zoom in here so you can actually see. So there's a look at the piston. You can see the rings. We just rotate the engine. That piston does not look bad. And you can see the back of the cylinder there as well. So, yeah, this does not clarify what's going on with this saw. But I would say the piston, the rings, the cylinder, they seem to be good. I'm kind of on the fence as far as where to go next on this. This is throwing a lot of mixed signals to me. The owner says he ran it on gas, and after looking at the piston the rings, the cylinder, I'm not seeing any signs of damage. In fact, it looks brand new, which makes me wonder, has this saw ever run from the factory more than a few seconds? And I'm thinking it hasn't. 
and most likely that saved the saw when the owner tried running it on gas because chances are it ran for a second like we're seeing now and then stalled out and that actually saved the saw. Now, we still have the low compression issue. I mean, 40 PSI is extremely low. You know, that said, the saw wouldn't run if it was really 40 PSI. You need closer to 100 to run a two-stroke engine. So what I'm thinking is that there's an issue with my compression tester. I mean, it's not that it doesn't work. I know this works. I use it all the time on generator engines, but those engines are much larger. The CCs are around 420, and this is only 58. So there's a very small volume of air that's getting compressed. And when I add in this tester with this long line, there's no Schrader valve down here. So now it's actually compressing not only the volume that's in the cylinder, but the volume that's in this line. And as a result, we're only getting 40 PSI up to the gauge. So to prove that, I'm gonna start my trimmer. I know this machine runs well, and then I'm gonna pull the plug, we'll put the compression tester on it, and it should be over 100 on a running machine. But I think we're gonna see something different. I'm gonna hold the throttle open. And according to this, the Echo has 25 PSI. And we know this is a good running machine, so I would say this is wrong. You know, it's not appropriate for a small engine without the Schrader valve down there. And that's a good thing because if this runs and it has 25 PSI according to that gauge, well, that one has 40. So that gives me some reassurance that there's enough compression in that chainsaw to run and compression is not the issue. So if it's not compression, what could it be? You know, we have spark, we have timing, we have compression. So we're left with fuel. There has to be something with the fuel, either not enough or too much air, like a leak, either at the base gasket or one of the crank seals, or even on the intake boot. You know, another possibility is a clogged spark arrestor on the exhaust. And this exhaust actually does not have a spark arrestor. And I can see through the exhaust. I mean, there is no obstructions in here at all. So I'm gonna actually put the exhaust back on. I don't think that's the issue. I'm gonna focus in first on fuel delivery. I'm gonna make sure that we can get fuel from this line. And then I'm gonna take a look at the pulse that the engine's providing, because that's what actuates the fuel pump, which pumps the fuel up to the carburetor. And yeah, we'll just see what that tells us and we'll go from there. I'm going to test the line going to the tank using this brake bleeder and the Mighty Vac. So if I start pulling a vacuum, we should see fuel coming up and into this container. And you can see there's no issue pulling fuel. That container's filling up very quickly. So there's no issue with the line. There's no issue with the fuel filter. So let's check the impulse line. I'm gonna do a very similar test, except that we don't need the container to catch any fluid. This line runs down into the crankcase. So every time the piston goes up and down, there should be a pulse of pressure. And that's what drives the fuel pump on top of the carburetor. So what I'm checking for is to make sure this line isn't clogged. If I pump some pressure in, 
it should go down and not build pressure. Look at that. It should not be doing that. I mean, it is going down, but it's going down way too slowly. So that line, that's obstructed. And like that, it's not going to drive the fuel pump, or if it's going to drive the fuel pump, it's going to be extremely weak. And that's what we're seeing. So let's get to the the other end of that line. I think we need to get this stuff out of the way. We'll get the line off and see if there's any junk in there. It's hard to tell, but I think, I think I see something in there. Let me just shine a light through it. Yeah, I think there's something in there. Let me grab this pick. Yeah, I can feel something in there. Let me see if I can blow that out. It's still there. Whatever it is, it just moved. I almost got it out. Seems like it's part of the hose, maybe a defect in how it was made or just a scrap from manufacturing. Now there might be another piece here. Just blow some more air through that. Oop. Well, that piece is gone, but I did see another piece blow out. Oh. It's got two pieces now. That might be it. That's it. Two tiny little bits of rubber came out. Seems to be the same material that the line was made out of. So most likely just some scrap from manufacturing. And they must have been positioned perfectly to clog this line. And with a clogged impulse line, the pump would not have worked. And the saw would have starved for gas. And that's exactly what we saw. It sounded like it was starving for gas. So let me plug this line back in. We'll do another test to make sure it's not building any pressure. And if it's not, then I think we're going to have a runner. And if there's any doubt, we can now see the light through this line. So that obstruction is completely gone.
All right, let's double check this. Perfect, we are not building pressure. And I'm also gonna just turn the engine over. If the pulse is making it, we should see the needle on this gauge bouncing around. Perfect. And that needle, it's bouncing back and forth. So we're definitely getting a pulse. So I think this is going to be a runner. Let's get the car back on and give it another try. Okay, let's give this a try. I think we're together enough. Switch is on, choke on. We'll lock the throttle. Give it a few pulls. I think that's the longest this saw has ever run. So let's, um, you know what, let's put the cover back on. That's going to make things a lot easier. And then I'm going to try to dial these needles in a bit. You know, we're a little off, but playing with the choke, I was able to keep it running and rev it up. So that is a huge improvement over where we were before. I just realized I put on the old carburetor and it's running pretty well. Wonder what the new carb would sound like. Let me swap the carbs real quick. Let's try this again, this time with the new carburetor. Choke on, lock the throttle. Open the choke. Nice. To be honest, I thought this engine was going to be smoked and this was going to be a teardown video. Yet, here we are. The saw starts, it idles, and it revs up. 
You know, that said, we're not home free yet. The idle is unsteady and it keeps leaning out. So I would say we do have an air leak. You know, it's either between the carb or the engine or potentially one of the seals or maybe the base gasket. So I'm going to actually pull this cover off. We'll get the bar off completely. And I want to restart it and just spray a little bit of starting fluid down by the crank seals and also by the intake to see if there's any change in the way the engine runs. Because wherever the leak is, it'll draw that fuel in and most likely stall the engine. And that'll tell me where to focus my attention. So yeah, let's get this off. We'll start it again and try to find that leak. things well they've escalated a bit so let me catch you up real quick uh, the last test you saw was me spraying the carb cleaner all around the crank seals the intake boot the impulse line and the base gasket and there was no change in the way the saw was running so the next step is to do a pressure test and in order to do that you have to block the exhaust as well as the intake so i cut up an old tube into two pieces and sandwiched those pieces between the exhaust and the head and the intake and the head. So now the crankcase is sealed with the exception of the impulse line. And now we can apply pressure to see if there's any leaks. So let me show you what I found. So I'm plugged into the impulse line. I'm just gonna pump it up to seven PSI. I guess first off, see if we can make it there. And if we do, does it hold? We're holding steady. No issues. So I'm going to let the pressure out and I'm going to switch to pull a vacuum and we'll pump it up to seven. You see, we're not pulling a vacuum. So we definitely have a leak when trying to pull a vacuum. 
but not when building pressure. So right now I have no issues going up to seven or even higher. It holds just fine. But if I rotate the crankshaft, watch what happens. That air starts leaking out. So we do have a bad seal on the crankshaft and I pulled off the flywheel. And if I spray it with water, you'll see the issue. This is actually soapy water. So I'm gonna pump it up again. And we have a massive leak out of that seal. And this saw is basically brand new. So I really wasn't expecting that. So we do need a new crank seal. You know, potentially this one was not installed right. So I'll take a look at that in a minute. And the other issue is the flywheel itself. I buzzed this nut off and didn't seem to come off without issue. But now that it's off, I went to put it back on and it pretty much drops in place. Like the threads are gone. I'm pretty sure it's the nut threads that are gone. So I'm gonna have to run to the hardware store and get a new nut and hope for the best. So in the interim, let's get this plate off, take a look at that seal and see if there's anything we can do to stop that leak. There is a problem with the seal. I'm not sure it shows up really on the camera, but this side of the seal, it's slightly below the level of the aluminum. And on this side, it's actually sitting proud. So this seal is crooked and that, that might be causing this issue. So I need to drive this side down just a bit and we can recheck it, see if it's working any better. Fixing that seal did not fix the issue. I think the damage is already done. So we do need a new crankshaft seal, at least on this side. You know, get a set just in case. You know, most likely the clutch side has damaged as well, but I don't wanna pull the clutch unless I absolutely have to. You know, given what happened here, I am a little bit gun shy. So I'm gonna make a trip to the store, see if I can find the right thread pitch nut hopefully of a higher grade material and see if the threads on the crankshaft are still good. And there's an up close look at the threads on the crank and they do look good. You know, I don't think we have the issue on the crank, but if I put the nut on that was on there, I think you'll see the issue. It pretty much can drop all the way down without having to screw it on. So that is a little discouraging, but I'm pretty sure it's the nut. And just got back from the hardware store and I picked up an M8 1.0. And this is a hard item to find in this country. Uh, they did have one, thankfully, it's grade eight. Not exactly the right nut for this crank, but really I just wanted to see that it engages the threads and just doesn't drop in place. And that, I would say, engages the threads on the crank. So, yeah, at least the crank is good. And I'm gonna spend a little time try to find the correct one, which would be serrated with a flange on the bottom. So, we're not dead in the water yet. The seal kit showed up today, and it contains everything needed to rebuild this engine. And it was only eight bucks. And that $8 actually bought me two kits. So technically this kit was only four bucks, 
which makes this seal about 50 cents. So let's just get it out, make sure it's the right part. Yep, seems like it's gonna be fine. So to get the old seal out, I need to drill a hole right in the center of the seal, being careful not to nick the outer race or the crankshaft or drive the drill bit too far and damage the bearing underneath. And once that hole is there, you can thread in a screw, like a wood screw, and just pull the seal out. Or if you have a pick, you can also pull the seal out. So I'm gonna use the pick. And we'll just put a little hole right there. And we're not through yet. There we go. Yeah, I can actually see the defect in the seal. If you look kind of on this side, you'll see it's not completely round. It is distorted, and that is why the seal was not working. Anyway, I'm gonna spend a second, clean up the surfaces. I wanna make sure the new seal has a nice clean surface so that we don't get any leaks. Kind of surprised actually to see a ball bearing in here. I mean, a chainsaw should have one, but at the price of this saw, I wasn't sure if I was going to see it. So that should be good. This is nice and clean. I'm just going to add a little bit of oil to the seal on the inner and outer race and tap that in place. Two-stroke oil might be a better choice here. But I am all out. So motor oil will have to do. So let's check this again. We'll start with the pressure test. We'll pump it up to about seven PSI. And it's not perfect. It's a lot better. It is dropping very slowly though. So let's just double check the seal that we put in there, make sure it's not still leaking. Don't see any bubbles. Let's just rotate the crank a little. And I'd say that crank seal is good, but we are losing pressure slowly. It's just below five. And a few seconds ago, I pumped it up to seven. So we do still have a leak. Let's check the vacuum. And we cannot build a vacuum. So I guess the question is, where is the other leak? You know, I'm willing to bet it's the other crank seal and there's really no way to double check it unless we get the clutch off. So 
Let's pull the spark plug out. I'm gonna put some rope in there just to lock the engine up. And then we'll try to get the clutch off without stripping any threads. And we'll double check the crank seal under there. And for something like a chainsaw, ideally you'd use a piston stop. It's something you just screw into the spark plug hole and it makes physical contact with the piston when the engine turns over. And that prevents the engine from rotating and makes getting that clutch off a lot easier. And the concern here is that two strokes have ports on the side. So if you're not careful, you could get the rope caught in those ports. So in this case, I actually rotated the engine so that the piston was about halfway to the top. And I'm hoping that'll minimize the chance of the rope getting hung up. And hopefully I don't destroy this clutch. There is an arrow here. It's almost impossible to make out, but I believe it's righty Lucy in this case. That is on there. That was on there, but we're in. And yeah, this crank seal is also bad. Let's just double check the other one. And no leaks from this new one. So to get this one replaced, we're gonna have to remove the oil pump and then we should be able to pull this one out just like we did the other side.
I think I'm going to just leave that on there. We have the clearance we need. And this seal is seated. So it is really surprising. This saw has very little use, and yet we have two bad seals. Anyway, this one's much more narrow, so I'm going to use a much smaller drill bit and pull it out the same way. This one's deformed as well in that corner. Very interesting. So this one may not go on as easy. The other side, the crankshaft was tapered, so it went on without an issue. And this side has a shoulder. So I might have to come up with something to transition it onto the shoulder or else it could fold the seal. But we do have two, so let's try the easy way first. I think that's it. Let's test it again. Let's start with the vacuum test. Couldn't build any pressure last time I tried this. And I have no issue getting up to seven PSI. And it's holding fairly steady. So I think we're good. Let's just try adding some positive pressure. Good enough for me. Not perfect, but it is a million times better than what it was. So I think this saw is going to run quite a bit better. So let's clean this up a little bit, put everything back together, and see if it runs any better. So I'm going to torque the flywheel down, but I don't know the torque spec on it. And to be honest, I don't want to go that tight, you know, given what happened with the nut. You know, if this was a name brand saw, I'd bring it up close to 20 foot pounds. If I didn't have an exact spec, 
Uh, for this, I'm going to do half that, I'd say. You know, I'd rather have the flywheel loosen up and shear the flywheel key than strip out the threads on the crank. And we're already there. I'll push my luck. Let's bring it up to 140. Good enough. I'm going to double check the compression. I've removed the rubber from each side so the engine can breathe normally. Now, I'm not going to use my trusty Harbor Freight kit. This one I've used for years, and it hasn't let me down on larger engines. But as we saw on really small, small engines, it's not a good choice. So I picked up a Mighty Vac compression tester. And the big difference here is the Schrader valve down where it screws into the engine. So this should produce a much more accurate result on any engine, and especially something like this that's so small. So let's see what compression we have. And since it runs, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it's gonna be over 100. Yeah, that's, that's some good compression. We're over 130, I'd say about 132. So 132 PSI, it's a big difference from the 40 that the other kit showed. I think we're almost home free here. There's really only one issue left. Well, actually two now. The first one is this safety. It has never worked since I've had the saw. The idea of it is you're supposed to hold that down before you can pull the trigger. The issue is it stays down. And the even bigger issue is that this linkage is somehow now disconnected or not connected properly to the trigger. So I'm gonna pull this cover off. There's a screw right underneath here. And I believe this should just lift off and then we can reconnect things the way that they should be. And this looks like an easy fix. There's a spring right here that actually should be underneath between those two plastic tabs right there. So that should go right back in without issue. And as far as the linkage for the carburetor, you can see that metal rod down in there. It's not in the right spot. There's actually a hole kind of right there where I think that linkage belongs. So let's fix those two things and then I think I think we'll be ready. All right, so that rod is all set. And this piece should go there with the spring underneath. that. And this cap actually holds the rod in place, that piece right there. And now we're together. Throttle is locked, and now it moves fully. Perfect.
let's give this a try. I've got the carb reinstalled as well as the spark plug. Now, I actually don't think this is going to start because if you remember the jets on the original carb, they were turned out quite a bit over two turns. And this carb, the new one, I think is even worse. And now that the leaks have been fixed, all the air is going to be drawn through the carburetor. So it's going to be air and fuel coming through and having those needles out as far as they are, they were compensating for those leaks. And now that those are fixed, I think we're going to be running too rich. So most likely I'm going to have to run those in to get it to idle properly. So let's give it a try. Choke on. Actually, we'll lock the throttle. Holy cow. <laughs> All right, that was not expected. The clutch unthreaded itself, so I clearly did not tighten that up enough. And I don't know where all the pieces are. And even if I did, this spring is now mangled. So we need a new clutch for sure. Anyway, let's start it again and make sure we at least have a good engine. Let's give this another try. Got the throttle locked, choke on, and hopefully we don't lose any more parts this time. kind of acting like it's starving for fuel again. Interesting. So right now I am pulling the fuel tank from the saw. I lost a video clip, which kind of explains why I'm doing this. The last clip you saw was me trying to run this engine and it was acting like it was starving for fuel. So I double checked the impulse line with the Mighty Vac. We had an impulse, so that was not an issue. I then tried to siphon fuel from the tank using the fuel line and the tank was full, yet I was only getting air from that siphon. So that told me there is an issue with the fuel line. And the only way to service the fuel line is to get the tank uninstalled. There it is. You can see the hole right there. So yeah, this line is shot. And it's a little different from most lines in that 
there's kind of a barb and an inverted barb on the other side, which kind of locks this in place. It's actually a good design, but really the only way to remove it is to cut it out. And I'm hoping I can put a standard line in its place. Otherwise, these are available on eBay. They're only like $6. So let's cut this one out. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. This opening, it is much too large. Not really the standard for chainsaws. So if I use a standard chainsaw line, it is quite loose in there. It's not going to make a seal. And even if I grab a larger line, something I would use on a generator, although it fits better, there is still a gap there. And that's going to leak. Not that it matters anyway, because this fuel filter, and really all chainsaw fuel filters, are not a good fit. They're just going to fall right out. And then you're going to have issues with the saw. So as much as it pains me to do it, I need to order the correct part. And actually, I need to order a few parts. I need the air filter, the air box cover, and a new clutch, apparently. But I don't want to order any of those parts until this saw runs properly. So let me pause it. We'll order this part, put this back together, and hopefully we'll hear this thing run properly. Well, at this point, I would say we're well past the hour mark on this video. And what do we have to show? I mean, the saw has not been torn down more at any point than it is right now. We basically have a chainsaw carcass and a box full of parts. You know, that said, I think this is the final piece of the puzzle. At least I hope it is. So let's get it installed and try this again. I realized when I showed this line earlier, it was a little out of focus. So you can see right there, that is the part that was really letting in the air. But even if you look at the rest of the line, it was in pretty bad shape. And I did test this initially way back in the beginning of the video, and it didn't have a leak. And on that lost footage, what I found was that if I held the line a certain way, it would siphon fuel right out of the tank. And of course, if you moved it the other way so that all these cracks opened up, it would pull just air. Anyway, for the new line, I'm just gonna use a bit of oil to help with the installation. And this one is a lot softer too than the one that was in there. So we'll just add a little bit of oil. Put that in. We need to take the cap off so we can pull it through. There we go. That should fix that problem. So I'm going to fast forward. I'm going to get this reassembled back to where it was the last time we tried testing it. And hopefully this time we get a better result.
I'm going to bring the torque up a bit on the flywheel. Right now it's at 140 inch-pounds. Yeah, I'd feel better at 180. It's pretty small though, the, the fastener. I think it's, it was an M8 1.0, so I don't want to go crazy on it. But after what happens with the clutch, I think a little extra torque would be in order. Okay, all back together, at least to where we were before. So let's pull it over, see if it'll start. Choke on, lock the throttle. Try it with the choke off. Come on, baby. Almost. Nice. Let's try it again. This time we'll adjust the jetting a little bit if we can.
That's all I needed to hear. The saw, it is idling properly. It's revving up. It's doing what it should do. So the jetting, it's actually not that far off. You know, I tried to tweak it. It stalled out. And honestly, I don't think I'm going to try to tweak it anymore right now. We need to get an air filter, the air box cover. I need to install the cooling and, of course, get a new clutch. So let me get those things and then we'll finish it up. I think we're ready to finish this thing up. The new clutch came today and included with that was a new needle bearing. You know, together, shipping included, only seven bucks. And I also located an air filter and an air box cover that I think will work for this saw. Together, these things were only $8, shipping included. And I also picked up a new side cover. The old one clearly has been run for some time with the brake on and the plastic melted and became distorted to the point where this band brake isn't really on the drum anymore. So it's ineffective. And this was also dirt cheap, I think 11 bucks. So I say we get the saw fully back together and get it outside and see what it can do. So I'm gonna start just by getting the clutch back on. So I'm just putting some grease on the new needle bearing. We'll get that installed. Then we can put the drum on, the washer. And then the clutch itself. And this time I actually bought a tool that'll let me tighten that up. So let me pull the spark plug. We'll get some rope in there and just make sure that the clutch is actually tight this time. So this kit actually came with a piston stop. So I'm gonna give that a try. You know, I've always had some reservation about using such a thing because you're really putting trust in the threads for the spark plug that they are strong enough to survive a bit of torque, which, yeah, I'm not sure I trust it on this saw, but I guess we'll find out how good the threads are. think that'll do. Can't actually use a torque wrench on this because my click style torque wrench only works with right-handed threads, not with left. So yeah, I might have to upgrade, but for now that'll have to do.
Ah, so close. It's, well, it's the wrong color, but more importantly, it's not a good fit. So I guess the good news is we have an air filter. That seems to fit, but not the correct air box. So I need to shop around, find something a little bit better. Well, I did scour the internet quite a bit looking for a better cover. And unfortunately, I struck out. This is the best we're going to get. You know, that said, I did find something that's going to help us get a little closer. This filter, it's pretty big and it's preventing the cover from going fully down. So I did find a smaller version of this filter and this actually is going to help things quite a bit because it fits better. It's a lower profile. And even though this cover is too long, it at least goes on all the way now. It's not being held up by the air filter. The only thing kind of holding it up now is just the plastic tabs right in the front that don't fit right here because the cover's too long. So I'm gonna cut those tabs off and we'll see what that gives us. My hope is that we can get it to fit at least good enough for a short-term fix. And with any luck, you know, the proper cover will turn up at some point. Wouldn't call it ideal, but it is the best we've got and certainly better than nothing. So let's get it outside. I want to get the saw warmed up and then we'll tune the carb a little bit and put it to work. See how it does. All right, so now it's the moment of truth. Time to find out if it was worth all the effort. So I'm gonna get the saw started. We'll let it warm up a bit. You know, potentially I might adjust the carb a bit. You know, right now it is set pretty close to the way the original carb was set. So I think we're pretty close. So once it's warmed up, I'll try cutting the small log right here. And assuming it goes well and the chain is sharp and the engine doesn't have issues, then I'll move on to something a little bit bigger and see how it does. been about a week since I last started this.
it did pretty well on those two test cuts. You know, I wouldn't say the chain though is exactly sharp. It does need to be sharpened and the chain did loosen up as well when making those cuts. So let's correct those issues real quick and try it again. That's a big difference a sharp chain makes. It made quick work of the small log and had no issues going through the larger one. So, you know, at this point, I would say we are 100%. And for a while, you know, I didn't think we were going to get there. I went into this assuming it was going to be a teardown video based on what the owner said about running straight fuel in this machine. And thankfully, this saw had an unbelievable amount of issues preventing it from running. 
You know, we had a questionable carburetor, a clogged impulse line, cracked fuel line, and two bad crank seals. So was it worth fixing? Yeah, I guess that answer depends because you couldn't bring this to a shop. The labor rate for the repair would have exceeded the value of the saw very quickly. And if you know how to do the work, you know, I guess the good news is the parts are really cheap. For about $25, I got this up and running fully. And I did have to spend another $25 to replace the missing parts. The air filter, the air filter cover, the damaged clutch, and the damaged side cover. So in the end, it was $50 to bring this machine back. You know, was it worth it? Yeah, I guess that's for you to decide. You know, in the end, I would say you get what you pay for. I mean, I have a 40-year-old steel. I have done nothing to it other than basic maintenance. It has the original carb, the original lines, the original crank seals, and it has never given me a problem. So, yeah, you get what you pay for. So, I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching. I just wanted to take a second and thank Ken, Tom, Stella, Henry, and Pete. You know, early on in this project, I was on a call with that group of people. They are all excellent small engine mechanics and have more experience than I do when it comes to two-stroke engines. Anyway, the topic of the saw came up and we discussed kind of the problems that I was having with it. And that group brainstormed and came up with a lot of great ideas on things to check. And I dare say, if I hadn't have had their assistance, then things may have turned out differently. Anyway, they all have their own YouTube channels. So I'm gonna leave links to them down in the description. And if you like small engines, which I think you do, you might wanna check out their channel. So thank you guys for the help. And I definitely learned a lot on this one.